This is a place for planting, for digging, for harvesting, for relaxing. It's a place to get your hands dirty, but most of all, it's about having fun. And that's what you'll always have when you're in the garden with Doug Oster. You want a green thumb too, don't you? Welcome to winter. <laughs> Finally caught up with us. By the time you see this though, I bet you there won't be any snow on the ground. That's part of filming these shows. And last time we saw each other, I told you I'm gonna be planting because the ground hasn't frozen. And that's exactly what I did. There are daffodil bulbs planted all underneath here because the ground is still soft. And I planted this shrub. This is called Heptacodium. And I bought it on sale and it should have been planted months ago, but I never got to it. But as I said, since the ground isn't frozen, I was able to plant it. And I read a new book called Plants with Style by Kelly Norris. I love it. And when he talks about Heptacodium, he talks about pruning it so you can see this exfoliating bark as the plant gets older. Now we can see it, but when this leaves out, we won't be able to see it. And during this time of the year, it's a great time to go out to the garden and take stock of what these plants look like, where they can be pruned, what works, what doesn't, the bones of the garden. Now this is an area I've been working on with moderate success. The heptacodium is tough as nails. That's why I put it here. I think it's gonna do great. We've got a Coosa dogwood we talked about last week that is there doing good. It was rubbed by the deer. Behind me, a paper bark maple, and it's doing great. But over here, we have a couple azaleas and rhododendrons that didn't make it, one or two that did make it. That's part of gardening. That's just the way it is. Now we're gonna do something today <laughs> that is kind of stupid, a little crazy, but it might work. Meet me in the vegetable garden. Do you like the snow? So here's the deal. I was cleaning out my disaster of an office <laughs> and stumbled onto four heads of garlic that I didn't get planted. And this is a pretty cool variety called Yakagani Purple, a local garlic that a friend gave me. And I was thinking about my options. I could just enjoy the garlic in the kitchen, eat it, but that would be kind of a waste because I want more. I want to perpetuate this variety. I guess I could plant it in a pot, but I've never had good luck planting in a pot. They always seem to rot and not sprout. Or I thought, why not try and plant them in the garden? You know, we usually plant this in the fall and I was looking at the weather and we've got a couple frigid days, but then some warmer temperatures. And I think this is my best bet for being able to harvest this garlic in July. And I love experimenting and it's gonna be fun to tell people when I do harvest that it was planted in January. So let me show you how we're gonna do it. So in my case, I've got these garlic bulbs left over. If you happen to have tulips, daffodils you might've got for Christmas or you didn't get planted, I think it's gonna be better for you to get them into the ground before it freezes, as long as it hasn't frozen already in your area. And all I've done here is I've pushed the snow and some leaves aside. The soil looks really good, but I wanna give it instant garden, which is gonna add this bag of compost. And then we're gonna plant in that and cover it with straw and we're off to the next job. We're choosing the largest cloves and watch how fast we can get this done. Give this garlic a nice blanket of straw. And now we're gonna go take a look at last week's mystery plant, because we figured it out. It wasn't me, <laughs> it was a friend. One of the great things about doing these videos is the feedback I get from you. And last week when I had this wonderful surprise of a plant, I had no idea where it came from. <laughs> I don't remember planting it, I don't know what it is. Well, I got a message from William Stubbs, who's been a big fan of the videos and he told me that it's Aram Italicum. Uh, he's from Orlando, Florida now, uh, lived in Ohio before that. So I thank you, William, for that ID. And the plant looks a little worse for the wear when it's got cold out here, but it'll be interesting to see if it dies back and then comes back in the spring. But I have to remember to look for it in the spring. Now let's get out of the snow and inside for a fun planting project. Great to be back inside. I'm excited to see what happens with our garlic experiment. I did have two heads left over. I have to mull over what I'm gonna do with them. I'm not quite sure. 
Might actually pop one of them up just as a safety measure, but we'll see. But now we have this wonderful indoor project building a terrarium. Terrariums were a big deal in the 70s and 80s and now have become really popular. And the plants that we're using here all came from Chapin's greenhouse, as did all the terrarium stuff, except for this mason jar. We're going to make one actually in a mason jar. And the plants are either succulents or tropicals, so mostly just house plants. And when things are closed up like this, they don't need to be watered as much. It makes a little environment there where it's not evaporating the water. So once a month, maybe on the watering, maybe every couple of weeks, depending on the plants. And the fun part is choosing the plants, but there's three basic things we have to have for a terrarium, and they all come from the nursery. Gravel, some charcoal, and some planting mix. This planting mix has already been moistened so that it's not soaking, but it sticks together pretty good. And the first thing we're gonna do is pour in a little bit of gravel for drainage at the bottom. I want about an inch, that's good. And the charcoal will act as a purifier for the air and water. We don't need quite that much, maybe right there, quarter inch. And now our planting mix. And this is definitely gonna be a mess. All right. As you can see, we're making quite a mess here. And remember, what happens on video stays on video. We'll get this cleaned up before the boss gets home. <laughs> we're not gonna eat at the dinner table like this. Now, what are we gonna put in here? I think baby's tears. Baby's tears are a house plant. They're indestructible. We'll enjoy being in here, and they'll fill this thing up in, well, I don't know, a couple months. We can just trim it back. There, that looks good. And on goes the top. We'll water when needed, and we just built ourselves a terrarium. All right, let's finish up. Who would have thought we'd still be gardening out there in January? I'm not sure if we should have been, but we'll find out in the spring. That's part of the fun. Going to enjoy this right on the windowsill, and for more information about everything we talked about today, including... A complete story about terrariums, check me out online. There's lots of pictures and columns, videos there. And I'll also be reporting from Baltimore, from the Mid-Atlantic Nursery Trade Show. And you get to see everything that's brand new for gardeners. Until next week, i got to figure out what I'm going to do with those two heads of garlic. I might have to taste a couple cloves. We'll see you then. Yeah, I'm rolling.